Hi, this is Keith, Van Tech Consulting. We're going to stay on track today with the Onyx 580 and talk a little bit about uh, one of the most confusing resistive faults that we can uh, have in our outside plant. So this is the Onyx 580. This over here is a Greenlee FLS, uh, it's an 1155 FLS. It's a fault loop simulator. This guy here is what we bring out to on-site training for copper testing and uh, DSL installation and testing. We can put all kinds of uh, ground fault shorts, bridge taps, series faults, noise, power influence, all the typical things that we would see and some of the atypical things we would see in our outside plant. So this is a really cool thing for, uh, for our on-site testing and training. So today, um, again, we're going to talk about one of the most insidious uh, faults that we could have, which is a series fault. Before we get going, I want to just kind of make something clear. We use a lot of terms in the telecom industry that are unique to the telecom industry. So we'll call things uh, a short, a slight short, a high open. When we're talking about these things, we're talking about electrical conditions. And when we talk about electrical conditions, a short is pretty simple. I mean, there, there is no such thing as a high open or a slight short. A short is an electrical circuit that allows current to travel along an unintended path where there's no or very low electrical impedance. So when we talk about impedance, what is that? Impedance is the amount of opposition or pushback that a circuit or part of a circuit presents to current or voltage change. Again, we're, we're kind of talking about Ohm's law here and the relationship between um, we have EIR, so voltage, current, and resistance. To demonstrate this and, and what this is about, uh, really simply, is I got a 9 volt battery here in, in the meter, so we're just going to go ahead and go over to our voltage and put it in continuous mode. And uh, we'll take a reading here. So we have 9.5 volts here. In 9.5 volts, we have no, no resistance, no change in impedance. Um, on this circuit. But if we take a resistor, and this resistor is about 60,000 ohms, and we put that into the circuit, what happens is our voltage drops. So the voltage drop is caused by the resistance to the voltage. When we not go back again to our Ohm's law, when we have a voltage drop, and voltage is the pressure or the, the push, the oomph that is behind the electrons that get them to flow, if we have a drop in the oomph for the push, we get less current flow, all right? So again, this is, this is where we have a change in the impedance. The series faults that we have, which is basically, if we go over to our ohms meter here, give you kind of a, an idea of what a series fault would be. If I just take this, this jumper here and I put this in, the, in between our two leads, we have zero ohms here, right? So what we're measuring is this jumper. So if we take and put a resistor in series with that, in other words, we put it in line with this, and so again, we'll take our 60,000 ohm resistor and put that in line, we come up with 55.78, so about 60,000 ohms. So that is in series with this conductor. When we talk about outside plant in a series fault, these things hide from us, and they're, again, they're pretty insidious. So when we look at the, our, our outside plant, so again, this is 1, uh, 1,920 feet of copper in this box. And when we look at our plant, if we go in and we go to our snapshot and do a resistance measurement, we have greater than 999 mega ohms. I mean, so far this is a perfect, a perfect circuit. If I put a resistor in series with this, so I'm gonna do it, I can do this on the switches, but I'm gonna do it outside the box, just so we can see what, uh, what's going on. So again, I'm gonna add this 60,000 ohm resistor in series. We'll hit the refresh button, and we get 999. And why? Well, because when we measure resistance, we have to have a complete circuit. And since this is open, 
what this is saying is that we don't have any kind of resistive fault in our outside plant that's giving us a path back. So if we were to take this and give it that path, so let's say for Grins that we put our short here on our tip to ring on the outside and do a refresh, what we're going to see is 55,000 ohms in our tip to ring circuit. So the deal with a series circuit or a series fault is that it's usually on one side or the other. So let's go ahead and take this out for now. We'll hook this back up. And what we're gonna do is we're going to do this just like outside plant. So we've thrown our series fault in here. We do a 999, 999, and 999. Perfect. We go throw our uh, DSL on it, and then all of a sudden we have all kinds of errors and faults and drops and retrains and nastiness. Customer's not happy. Why? Because we do have a series fault in here that's changed the impedance of the circuit. The DSL doesn't like that. So how do we isolate this down, or how do we find out what the problem is? We need to do what's called a resistive balance test. And what we're going to do is we're going to strap the far end. Again, this is going tip to ring and then uh, strapping it off to the ground. So all of these are basically commoned up here. We'll go ahead and do our resistive test again. So we had 999 on our tip to ring circuit. We have 164 ohms, but on our tip to ground, we have 460 and our ring to ground, we have 515. So that's about 60 ohms of difference there. So what that says is that on our ring side, we have a resistor that's sitting on that ring side in series. It's sitting this way. So we can't see it when it's open because it's in line with that one conductor. If we take that series fault out of there and then do a refresh, what happens is We've got 105 ohms, 460 and 462. So the rule of thumb on a balanced pair, resistively balanced pairs, it has to be within 1% uh, or 5 ohms, whichever is less. All right? So this one is perfectly balanced at this point. That's how you identify, again, if we have a series fault, what we're going to see is our two numbers here, our tip to ground and ring to ground, are outside of 1% and greater than 5 ohms difference. So we have that series fault on the ring ground. So that shows you how to identify an issue on the copper pair. And then the next thing is that we have to go ahead and try and find where this is at. And that's another video. This is the kind of things that you get when you get formalized training with Vantech Consulting. We'll come in, we'll help you learn what the, what the conditions are, identify them, and go locate them. So that's the magic of working with these meters and understanding how this all affects our DSL, how this affects our outside plant, and again, affects our circuits. And it doesn't matter whether you're using the, the uh, Onyx 580, the HST 3000, the AMS 965, the DSP 965, any meter that has the ability to read resistance can do a resistive balance test exactly the same way that, uh, that we did this. So I hope this was helpful. If you want more information on training, give us a call. We're always happy to talk about that and uh, help out where we can. If you have questions on the meters, feel free. Drop us a message down in the, uh, in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, ring the bell. Join us on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter again. Hope it was helpful. Hope you learned something. Yeah, until next time, take care, be safe, and we'll talk to you soon.